Okay, I have a spicy conspiracy theory for you today. And I'm just gonna start out by saying it's a lot easier to control the masses and control the narrative around something through emotional manipulation. So you'll notice if something is considered a tragedy, it's like totally taboo to ask questions about it. Case closed, that's it. So if there's people in the comments that have a problem with this or are calling me insensitive for talking about this, that's fine because if it's true, that's the desired outcome. Anyways, this is the crew of the 1986 Challenger Space Shuttle mission. Infamously, on January 28th, 1986, the space shuttle exploded right after takeoff. The disaster was broadcast on live television to 40 million viewers. Two men, Bob Eberling and Roger Boisjolly, worked tirelessly to warn NASA about an issue with the shuttle's O-rings, making calls and warning anyone that would listen going all the way back to October the prior year. They warned that if these O-rings were used on a launch on a day that was below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, that there would be a catastrophe. But of course, no one listened. Which automatically kind of makes me think they wanted the catastrophe to happen. Roughly 80 seconds after the launch, the shuttle exploded and all seven crew members lost their lives. This is Judy Resnick, an engineer and pilot aboard the Challenger mission. In 2013, an eagle-eyed internet user found Judith Resnick, a law professor at Harvard Law School. Some people were a little taken aback by the identical name, age, and likeness, so they started digging. This is Michael J. Smith, also an engineer and pilot aboard the Challenger shuttle, who passed away that fateful day in 1986 at the age of 39 years old. This is Dr. Michael J. Smith, professor of engineering at the University of Wisconsin. Hmm. This is Sharon Krista McAuliffe, arguably one of the most famous things about the Challenger mission. She was supposedly just a teacher that was picked at random to be one of the astronauts, which made it all the more tragic when she passed away due to the Challenger disaster in 1986. This is Sharon A. McAuliffe, also a law professor who received her degree shortly after the Challenger disaster. Dick Scobie was the commander of the mission. Here's Commander Dick Scobie next to Richard Scobie, the CEO of Cows and Trees. Here's his company's original logo. It's a cow, but it's not in a tree. It's strapped to a rocket. And gee, that jet stream kind of looks familiar. In fact, just in case I wasn't making it clear, uh, the top picture is the Challenger ship shortly after exploding. So, you know, hmm. Astronauts Ronald McNair and Ellison Onizuka both passed away when the Challenger shuttle exploded. Miraculously, it was found out that they both had twin brothers, Carl McNair and Claude Onizuka. But ancestry searches were done for both Carl and Claude, and there was no birth records found. And the odds of two sets of identical twins in a crew of seven are astronomical. But that's just a theory. Rest in peace to the crew of the Challenger space shuttle mission.